Hello again. So in this final video, I'm just going to do a couple of examples of using the second derivative test. So I've written it out again here. This is a test to find the local maximum and the local minimum or minima of a function. And what it tells you is if the derivative of the function is equal to zero and the second derivative is positive at some point x, then this point x is a local minimum. And if the derivative of the function is zero, and the second derivative is negative at some point x, then x is a local maximum. Okay? Remember, local minimum means it looks like this. Local maximum means it looks like this. Okay. So I'm just going to do a couple of simple examples to show you how this method works. So the first one I'm going to take is f of x is equal to e, um, sorry, e to the x minus x. Okay. Right, so we need to solve df by dx equals 0. So this means e to the x minus 1 is equal to 0. So this means e to the x is equal to 1, which means that x is equal to 0. So there's one point here, x equals 0, has derivative equal to 0. Is this point a minimum or a maximum? we can apply the second derivative test, so df by dx squared evaluated at x equals 0. So I differentiate this again, and I just get e to the x evaluated at x equals 0. Okay, notation is a bit problematic with that, so this gives me 1. Okay, so the second derivative at this point is equal to 1. 1 is greater than 0, so greater than zero means we've got a local minimum. So therefore, x equals zero is a local minimum. Okay, so that's it. For this function, it was quite simple. We got one point where the gradient is zero, that's x equals zero. And at this point, the derivative, the second derivative is positive, which means we've got a minimum. Okay. So one of the things I asked you to do again in the problem sheet is to use this information to plot the graph. So I better do that too, I think, for this example. So here I'll plot as a function of x this function. So we know that it's got a minimum at the point equals 0. And we know that when x equals 0, this function is equal to 1. So I'll mark that on here. Here it is 1, and we know that this is a local minimum, so it must look like this. And what does it look like on each side? Well, if x is positive, then e to the x explodes very rapidly. So on this side, it must very rapidly shoot up. Exponential growth. And on the other side, e to the x, if x is negative, e to the x is a small number, and I get minus x, which will give me a 45 degree line coming out here like this. So on the other side, I get approach this line here. OK, so the function looks something like that. So you see that in this picture, I've included all the information I want. I've included where the function has a minimum. The value of the function at the minimum is equal to 1. OK, and I've also drawn here the asymptote, as x goes to minus infinity, it falls along this straight line. And I've shown that it goes to plus infinity, as x goes to infinity this way. Okay, so that's quite a good sketch of the graph. Second example, f of x is x divided by 1 plus x squared. Okay, so this is slightly more tricky to differentiate, not particularly. So df by dx equals 0. So I need to differentiate this. So I'll do this using the uh, product rule. So I get 1 over 1 plus x squared. That's differentiating the top. If I differentiate the bottom, I get minus 1 plus x squared squared. And then I get x times the derivative of this, which is 2x. Okay, equals zero. 
So I can simplify this if I put everything over a common denominator. And I get 1 plus x squared from here. And I get minus x squared from there. So in summary, 1 minus x squared over 1 plus x squared squared is equal to 0. OK, so this bottom is always positive. So this means that 1 minus x squared equals 0, which means that x is equal to plus or minus 1. So here we have two points where the derivative is equal to 0. x is plus 1 and x is minus 1. So to find out whether these are maximum or minimum, we can use the second derivative test. Okay, so we've calculated the first derivative, df by dx, that was 1 minus x squared divided by 1 plus x squared squared. So we need to compute the second derivative. So again, I'll use the product rule. On the top, I get minus 2x divided by 1 plus x squared squared. Then on the bottom, I get minus 2 over 1 plus x squared cubed times 1 minus x squared times the derivative of this thing with respect to x, which again is 2x. Okay, so ordinarily I would simplify this equation, but in this case, particularly for the second derivative test, you don't really have to simplify it. And the reason is, if x equals plus or minus 1, then 1 minus x squared is 0. So anyway, this part of the equation is equal to 0 when x equals plus or minus 1. Okay. So this part you can just ignore for the purposes of the second derivative test. Okay. So therefore, at x equal 1, d2f by dx squared is equal to minus 2 divided by 2 squared. Okay, so that's minus a half, but all that matters is that it's negative, and if it's negative, then the test tells you that it's a local max. Okay, and at the other point, x equals minus 1, d2f by dx squared is plus 2 over 2 squared. All that matters is it's positive, so this is a local minimum. Okay, so we have two points where the derivative, first derivative is 0, one of them is a maximum, one of them is a minimum. Let's plot the graph. Okay, so remember that the function was f of x is x over 1 plus x squared. Okay. Okay, x, and we know that the maximum and minimum are at plus and minus 1, so here's 1, here's minus 1. We can work out the value of the function at these points. If x is equal to 1, then I get plus a half. So here I will have local maximum. And if x is minus 1, then I get minus a half. So here I will have a local minimum. Another thing you can notice about this function is if x is 0, I get 0. So it must go through the point 0 here. And if x is very large, then I can ignore the 1. And this just looks like 1 over x. So for x very large, the function decays like 1 over x. This down here and this down there. Okay. And then if you join up all these points, you get a pretty good graph for the function. Apart from my bit of a mess there, you, you see the, the shape of the function. Okay, so we've got goes to 0 at plus and minus infinity. It also goes through 0 when x is equal to 0. And you've got one local maximum here. In fact, it's a global maximum for this function and one minimum here. 
So the other examples on the practice sheet you solve in exactly the same way as I've done in these examples here. A final thing I want to mention about the second derivative test, which you may have already been wondering, the second derivative test, as I stated it, tells you about the cases where the second derivative is greater than zero or the second derivative is less than zero. But you might be wondering what happens if the second derivative is equal to zero. Well, in this case, um, the second derivative test basically can't tell you the answer. So let me just briefly explain why. So what happens if d2f by dx squared is equal to zero? So this is best understood just by a few very simple examples. If I look at the graph f of x equals x cubed, okay, so I'll just draw it very roughly. This looks something like this. So you can see that there is a point at zero where the gradient is zero. So here you've got by df by dx at the point zero is equal to zero. And the second derivative is also equal to zero. And you see that this example is not a maximum or a minimum. This is actually what's known as a turning point or a point of inflection. of the function. So it's where the function starts going one way and then turns around and goes the other way. So if the second derivative is equal to zero, you may have a function which looks like this, i.e. not a maximum or a minimum. But you could also have a function like x to the 4. I plot that function that looks something like this. Okay. And again you see that it is flat at zero. So again we have df by dx equals zero, sorry, at zero equals zero, and the second derivative at zero is also equal to zero. But in this case you see that you do still have a local, or in this case a global minimum. And finally if you consider just the negative of that function, minus x to the four, So this is just minus that function looks like this. Okay, and you can see that in this case, at the point zero, you have a local maximum. Okay. So the basic, the simple answer is what happens if the second derivative is zero? Well, you may in either get a function which looks like this, i.e. has no maximum or minimum, or you could still get a maximum, sorry, still get a maximum or still get a minimum but it depends upon the higher derivatives in this case. So if the second derivative is zero, then you need to look at the third derivative, the fourth derivative, or just look at the values of the function on either side to determine whether the point is a maximum or a minimum or neither. Okay. But for the purposes of this class, I will not ask you any examples like this. For the purposes of this class, all of the derivatives will either be, so all of the second derivatives will either be positive or negative, and then you'll be sure it's either a local minimum or a local maximum.